D. I'm watching. I'm watching the kicking legs, mate. I'm a sexy animal, sexy man, sexy man. Grace and I are going to show you the kicking legs prop right now. Let's get to it. <laughs> All right, uh, hey everybody, Chris here, and uh, I wanted to show you guys our kicking legs prop. Um, it uh, it's been awesome. It the thing is just it's like a it, well it is a machine, but it, it just will not stop. I mean he's been kicking for like two years straight now, and uh, we never shut him off. He just does this on our cafeteria. Three years. He's been he's he. This is a prop we've had for three years, and uh, we don't have him ever hooked up to a timer or anything. We just leave him running like this. Yeah, he was in a lawn mower, and then he was in a hole, a ditch, and then he was in a coffin. Yep, and uh, we, I just, I just, you know, it, it's no new uh, idea. Uh, I think I found some construction drawings on. Um, uh, what Omar, was it? Omar's haunted trail. Yeah, it was either that one or the... Halloween form? Yeah, it was one of those. Or YouTube? Or YouTube. Yeah, there's lots of videos on YouTube for how to build these. I just wanted to share with you guys basically uh, our, our uh, what we chose to construct it out of and just its little innards. So let me get his birthday suit off here. Wait, you can't take someone's birthday suit off. I mean, you get have to it. get them in their birthday suit. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so let me get him down to his birthday suit. Man, you are really going to dissect him. <laughs> Instead of buns of steel, he's got, he's like more cotton, bu buns of cotton right here, which is just a, basically a pillow that I stuck a zip tie in and uh, uh, to kind of form some, some nice cheeks. You know, he was, he had kind of a flat butt, you know. And if you want a real successful kicking leg, you gotta, you gotta work on that butt. Uh, these are basically just some, uh, I think they, they might even be a pair of my old pants or something. I know that these dress shoes are. Um, but uh, before I take these off, I just wanted to show you guys that uh, what I what I have to do is um, I he's got a pair of dress socks on with his dress shoes, and we will close pin or use safety pins to. Um, keep his pants attached to his socks otherwise what ends up happening is uh is his pants ride down and you know he doesn't doesn't look as good so before i take his little britches off uh another thing too is we may you know i pull his pants up as high as it can go and then i'll like take a, a basically like a screw a drywall screw and i put it on either side so um yeah let me get this thing um, I got his shoes off, and uh, before I take his pants off and take his socks off here, I just wanted to show you that basically I had used some of this foam and uh, just taped them on there to kind of create like a calf muscle type of a look. So, you ready to show him some more stuff? Hmm? No? Alright, I'll do it. Um, all right, guys, so I got one of the socks off, and I just wanted to show you basically the joint. This whole frame that I made is out of uh, aluminum. I want to say that it's uh, two inch, two inch square, square aluminum. And um, you can see you can actually like move the feet in any position that you want. Um, it's got uh, it's just held together by one like quarter inch bolt there and then uh, I just tech screwed it to this you'll see that I cut an angle on there and then I left enough space in in there to where you could uh, have the freedom to kind of move and that foot into any position and then moving down to the knee basically uh, some two inch flat stock on both sides uh, I tech screwed him into the thigh and then just bolted it into the knee joint uh, there. Um, I believe, let's see if you can see in here. No, there's no, there's no kind of bushings or anything on there, but I did grease, I keep that grease, that joint in there greased really well. Uh, then this bolt here, you can see it's where I connected the turnbuckle 
me see if I can turn the light on there for you guys. Uh, basically, to keep this kind of centered, I put a couple bushings on either side of the uh, turnbuckle in there, and you can see all the grease in there. It's this guy basically runs. All right, the two tubes that are on the back of the thigh, uh, I got that idea off of somebody, and it's it was great because before I had those on there, those turnbuckles that were going back and forth just kept snagging on the pants, and it just kept creating a a, a pretty bad problem. So. Uh, I didn't mess, want to mess around with it and basically this is just some uh, plastic tubing and to make it the size that I wanted you can see in there how I kind of slit slit it and just kind of overlapped itself and then tech screwed it down. The turnbuckle how it connects to the flat stock is basically I have I have rounded the edges of the flat stock in here drilled a hole through it and then the turnbuckle sits on top of it and I've got the bolt basically just going right through the turnbuckle, and that's how that connection is made, right in there. And then that flat stock shoots all the way up to the uh, to the arm, the swinging arm that it's connected to the four by four block. So, and this plastic tube is just basically uh, a tech screw on either side. And I just made it the size of the thigh that I wanted it to be. That's another thing that this thing works really good for is just keeping the shape of the thigh. But uh, let me open this lid for you guys. You can kind of see how I grinded the contour of a, of a plumber crack there. You know, it's all about realism with Hollywood Haunter here. Um, <laughs> inside, um, this is pretty much, this This 4x4 block is the only original piece from uh, from the very first construction design from him. But um, basically, I've got the windshield wiper motor, and it is powered by a, uh, actually this is like an LED transformer um, that I had, and it, it, it works, it's the same voltage and makes this thing work. Uh, these blocks that are jammed up right in here, this was kind of a quick fix from this year. What I have it held on to the 4x4 with is a couple lag bolts and they end up working themselves loose all the time. So what I did just as a quick fix one night is I jammed all this wood in there to keep it from coming off. Uh, but what needs to happen is I just need to do some through bolts through this whole thing that holds it tight and that'll fix the problem so that's part of the reason why I have this out and I thought I'd show you guys everything but uh, uh, I, you know I just I keep every, everything's real messy in here I keep it really like just greased really well uh, I bought some of these um, these ball connectors for all my joints and uh, they, they work really nice they're like uh, something that you'd see kinda like on the end of uh, uh, the shocks that are uh, that hold up like your back window um, or your hood uh, on your car and stuff and they I think I got it from McMaster car and um, they work really well because you can just basically pull the little pin off and you can pop them off and on and it's just it's, it's having that as a ball joint instead of a bolt it just it just got rid of so many problems I mean I was just having all kinds of wear issues and things you know getting the holes getting bigger and just things falling apart so uh, this seemed to work the best uh, but anyway it goes into a piece of flat stock and then once it goes in through here it connects to the turnbuckle but um, it basically just rotates on this one this one bolt this bolt actually goes all the way through in the bottom I have it uh, uh, kinda countersunk on the bottom Let's see if I can flip this thing over show you. See, you can kind of see I have it uh, countersunk in the bottom and the bolt goes all the way through. This is just a plywood box, three-quarter inch plywood box that houses this thing. I had a, I had a chase unit also inside here the first year um, that we had this under the lawnmower and it was connected to two puck lights that were mounted under the lawnmower and the, uh, the puck lights were like uh, red and a and an orange light and they would flash it kinda made it seem like there was um, the blades were turning on top of them you know when it was kicking and stuff so 
let me see, oh, this spandex that's on the side right here. Basically, I just stretched that over the coffin this last year just to kind of fill the whole space up. Uh, the piece was a lot bigger than that, but I stapled it to the inside of the coffin so you couldn't see that it was just a box. You know, it just ended up ba basically being legs that went into blackness inside the coffin, so... That worked real nice hiding everything. Well, having these turnbuckles is is nice because every once in a while I'll notice that like his legs will be actually kicking into the ground, and uh, it's because the little lock nut on the turnbuckle there gets loose. But uh, it's really nice to have these turnbuckles because I can just constantly make those kinds of adjustments just to kind of fine tune them in there. When I first built them, um, um, I just had the flat stock basically going to the bolt and I had no way to adjust it and uh, you know it I, I and you know if you, if any of you are ever gonna make one of these if you haven't already you know the the biggest trick is is the length of this arm right here and the placement of this motor you know that that figuring that out is the only thing you really gotta play with um, all these other things have been worked out to where it's pretty much, you know, uh, nothing to really try to figure out. You just put it together and make sure there's lots of grease on it. So, that is it, man. This thing will go forever. You're like, wow, that was a blast. Not really.